So then I started looking into what is the traffic variability by the hour that you publish. So the ultimate question that editors wanted to know is what's the best time like what they were trying to optimize for was page views. That's the metric that people most often are drawn towards um, when we talk about like overall traffic. So this is looking at the traffic variability by hour published. Again, you can see the deepness of the red lines representing the fact that those are the hours that we publish the most. And the range around the median is showing the 40th to 60th percentile. So traffic does stay within a certain range. Averages are always higher because BuzzFeed has breakaway hits. So there is always that variability between the average and the median. Um, but what I found was this is looking at all buzz posts. There wasn't like a specific time that it seemed like a really great idea to publish something. So I broke down the problem even further and said, OK, we have all posts. Let's take a specific vertical. I'm using science as an example. This data is not actually what happened, but you'll get the picture. Um, so it was, Let's look at science content only, and then break it down by day, and then break it down by hour, and try and understand what are the hours that our science content performs the best. Um, so it's 7 PM on, Tuesday, on Thursdays. I was like, great. This is amazing. I am the best. <laughs> and at BuzzFeed, we celebrate with gifts. So that's just like kind of part of the culture. Um, so anyway, I thought that I was amazing. I was about to go talk to the editor of the science vertical, and then realized that that's actually not a helpful piece of information. Um, so there are a lot of issues with being really prescriptive with time to publish. And I, would, I have to caveat this by saying that at BuzzFeed, we produce over 5,000 English language posts a month. So the amount of content that we have makes it so that you wouldn't be able to optimize for each individual post. Like, there is no perfect hour for every individual post. Um, but what I found was that the best time to publish often just reflected what editors believed the best time to publish to be. So going back to that faux science example, um, they thought that Thursday afternoon or Thursdays at seven were the best time. So they had always held their like most important pieces for that moment, and they had always skewed towards thinking that that was the truth. And you know the lifetime people or the life people would publish their best content on the weekends. So they're perpetuating their belief that this is true. So editors have the ability to identify really you know, overperforming content, and they're leveraging that to continue to confirm what they already believe to be true. So in me looking at it, I was just discovering what they believed. Um, furthermore, if we were able to identify a time that editors should all publish, it would stop being the time that they should publish, because everyone would want to publish at that slot. When you have an organization with hundreds of people and you tell them, like, OK, science, you should publish at 7 PM on Thursdays, and lifestyle, you should only publish on Sundays, we would, the content would end up cannibalizing itself. And instead of actually being a benefit, we would end up with a bunch of people trying to vie for like the prime slots. Um, but really what was most important here is that publishing time was a factor in a post success. Like it, it did have an impact. Um, it was hard to know if that impact was because of that editorial, um, the editorial opinion that was going behind it or if it was actually the time really mattered. Um, but it's not a significant one and really having individual writers focus on this is more is mostly distracting, and it's not really helpful. Like when you look at our content, um, like data isn't the only thing that's going to help you reach this. Like so much of what makes our content great is that people write stories that connect with people. Um, so, what state do you actually believe in is one of our most popular posts of all time, and. It really connected with people because you wanted to say to your friend from Ohio that you should also really be from Ohio, which is where I'm from. It's a great place to be from. Um, and anyway, so everyone shared it. And it was this amazing phenomenon where everyone wanted to take this quiz. Um, what colors are this dress are similar. Like it, it started a conversation beyond us. Um, but and it's not only these buzzy posts that do that. We had a story recently that got over 3 million views that was about a mother-daughter story that was like pretty sick and twisted, where the mother had been pretending that the daughter was sick forever, and the daughter ended up killing the mother. Um, and 
I just described that way too bluntly, but that's what it was about. Anyway, millions of people consumed it. It was just like this incredibly engaging story. Um, and so it's really, there's so much that content creators know and understand about their content that's hard to pull out as someone looking at the data. Um, oh, and furthermore, these are all published at entirely different times of day. One's published at 11, one's published at 5, one's published at 9 p.m. So it doesn't, it's not the, the main thing that you should care about. So coming out of this, we decided to not go around telling editors what the best time to publish was. But instead, we centralized US publishing. So now we can better spread out content and avoid the distraction of gaming the publishing time. So individual editors don't hit publish the same way they used to. It's, it's centralized and scheduled a little bit more. So now you don't see the increase that happens when people are at work. Um, it's actually spread out through a longer day frame. And also, the dips aren't as big on the weekends, because even though we don't have that many people working on the weekends, they still have content that they're saving for that. Um, furthermore, one of the most interesting parts of this analysis was that we discovered that editors really had some knowledge of success that wasn't measurable from a data component. They could say, like, this post is going to do really well before it was published. So we actually did a project to quantify and measure how good they were at identifying posts that would get really big. And um, now we use that information to surface that content to all the distribution platforms that we have available. So editors will identify posts that they think are going to do really well and then share that information with our distribution teams and our promotion teams so that they can make sure that co that content gets the m best audience possible. Um, but the most important thing is that we changed our perspective on how we use data with creative people. Um, so we now only really look for opportunities where more information will be actionable and it won't be distracting. Um, it will be something that will help them to urge on their creative process and not inhibit it. Um, so that is BuzzFeed. <laughs> <laughs>